Hello everybody, I'm SJM. Welcome back for episode 4 of TFCR2. Uh, in between episodes, I did some wiki reading to figure out why I couldn't find any copper or tetrahedrite. Um, I gathered up some wood, so I've now got some oak, I've got a good amount of oak, a little bit of maple, some Havea and Douglas fir, uh, just so I can figure out what I want to build my hut out of when I do get there. And I got the mining thing figured out, so we can go over that. Uh, just over here, I got that copper vein found, so... I'll go for a quick little swim here. So what was going on was that the um, tetrahedrite was too far down. And I read on the wiki that um, each of the um, minerals has uh, certain types of rock or um, medium that they will spawn in and not spawn in so you got to read the charts and figure it out now even though um the tetrahedrite was spawning in this phyllite medium it was actually a little bit too deep for the prospectors pick to pick up so i was only going to i think it only works in a 12 by 12 by 12 um sphere so I was probably down like 13 or 15 blocks or whatever, so just out of range of what I could pick up on the surface. So I'll show you where I started here. And you, we, we really need to be careful of gravity because rock, cobblestone, rock, dirt, uh, as well as obviously gravel and sand all follow gravity physics. Uh, the wood and and other some other things don't follow follow gravity physics, so you can actually build, but you gotta work your way up there. You can't just make a dirt hut or a cobble hut or whatever. So I started going down here. I dug a two by two, going down, and I got lucky and unlucky. So about halfway down there, you see I opened up into a cave fell down, lost, you know, two-thirds of my health or something like that, so really lucky that I didn't die. Uh, but I did come out in a cave system, uh, which eventually led me to finding the tetrahedrite. I also found, I'll also go over the other couple of things that I found while I was down there. Um, but while I was down there, I did initiate some cave-ins as well. So, which is why there was a little, like, one by two ravine here, like two there, two there, two there, and then a whole bunch of this stuff actually collapsed down. So now I have a handy way to get down and up there, which is great, um, but can be a little bit scary with the cave-ins and, like, killing yourself while you're down there. So in this cave, we got a bunch of this spodumen, spodumeni, spodumene. Not sure, there's samples up on the top there if I want to figure out exactly what that stuff is. A little bit more down this way. I haven't seen any hostile mobs down here yet, even though I've been, I was down here for quite a bit, so I'm not sure what's, oh yeah, speaking of which, one's gonna show up out of the blue, right? Of course, of course. Uh, so, yeah, I'm just going to get out of there for now and go back over here. Um, I did fall down. <laughs> I was trying to come, trying to get up there to get, because I had some ladders going up there and I wanted to retrieve them. Uh, and I ended up falling down and killing myself in here. So that's where I got that death marker come from. So we can delete that because we've taken care of that. I'll just, I'll leave it around so I can count my deaths later, but. So then I was wandering around and just using the prospector pick. I had these in my offhand actually. So that's a false negative that I just got there because we got a large sample of phyllite tetrahedrite. 
So then I started digging another two by two to go down here and I ran into another cave. Now this one didn't cave in on me as I came down into it and I had some dirt and gravel in my inventory and I had to kind of you know drop it down one by one and it eventually made this shape so I could fall jump in here without dying. Uh, Oops, I'm going to just light up a little bit here because I initially came down here without any light, which was kind of scary. And as you can see, all of this cobble stuff here is from cave-ins that I did while mining. Now you can see that we've got some of these support beams. So support beams are extremely important to help um, alleviate the cave-ins. And from the wiki, if I figure it out right, you can build it um, up to, th I, I, I think you can build them more than three high, but three high and I can get each one five wide. And it will support four in the cardinal directions and one up and one down. And just because I've got a whole big huge of vein of tetrahedrite in here I was just kind of building a bunch of them and uh, just mining all of that out where I could and if I could drop back down into here we'll go here so the tetrahedrite is actually super hard to see in the dark because it's <laughs> the same color as the rock so that's a little bit tricky but not too bad once you get used to it and like I see I've got that support beam there so if I mine out this one it should be fine but I'm going to do it from the upper level here oh. and so the stone is actually pretty hefty to get through and then you only end up with like one rock out of each stone that you mine. And then you can put the stones back together in your crafting gid to make cobblestone if you want. Uh, just kind of alleviate some of the inventory clog once you start digging up a lot of it. And so this tetrahedrite turned out to be a poor sample. So there's three different qualities of the ores that you find underground. There's poor, and then just regular, it doesn't have any prefix on it, and then there's rich. And so the poor gives you 15 units per piece. So I need to make sure that after I've done digging out my copper, I've got at least 1,400 so I can make the um, number of ingots of um, copper that I need to make the anvil. We'll go over that a little bit later when we um, actually get to making it. As well as any extra copper that I want for making more bronze because I'm probably going to need to make more tools at some point, right? Uh, that one. Copper drop down there. That's not too big a deal. Now, you can't place stone like that so just be aware of that when you're going through and it will actually um, mess up items on the ground too I think if it if a piece of stone falls on oh that's the wrong thing the piece of item rock falls on an item down there then you might lose it so let's just pop down here grab some of that stuff and then we'll see about getting another one of these uh, support beams done up. Oh, the support beam recipe. So it is, um, it's not shapeless, it's shaped. You'd have to put it in this exact fashion. So one, your saw there, and then two logs on top of each other, and you'll get eight support beams out of each craft there. Uh, when you place a support beam down, and you put one on the ground it will build up three high automatically and then if you want to build it higher you can place ones on top of it so you will see over here 
where I did this one up four high because I had one to make up for it. And to the cross beam, I just put one there and it went across automatically. This I trust is holding it up. I don't know why it, those two spawned that way, but they did. And I'm not too worried about it because I'm assuming that it's holding it up fine. It's just, oh, there's a creeper. Huh, so placing torches with the offhand doesn't work so good. That's interesting to note. But yeah, anyways, I will continue. Oh, I put those in my offhand so I can see. So you guys can see. And I will just keep on mining up some of this stuff. And then we'll come back. Oh, I may as well go over this way and show you the other thing I found while I was down here. Just make sure I don't run into any enemies. Oh, yeah. Oh, I think it was back where that skeleton was. <laughs> There's a rooster running around down here. He might have come down with one of the cave-ins. I'm not 100% sure, but... Uh, at any rate, there is a vein of sphalerite in this... Um, cave somewhere as well which is amazing because we need some of that to make some more of the bismuth bronze eventually right so I thought that was a handy find so um, when you're wandering around in these caves you're fine you don't have to worry about the cave-ins it's when you actually break blocks you start initiating the um, checks for cave-ins so actually, now that I think about it, the sphalerite is up here. Oh yes, yeah, so the old like 1.7 or whenever before they changed it, mechanics of the ladders work in this pack so you can get away with doing them every other block. Oh, is this skeleton around here still? Don't think so. So yeah, so here we are with the Sphalerite. Now I'm not worrying about lighting this up perfectly so that nothing spawns. I am just worried about lighting up enough so that I can see if something spawns there. Then I can strategize around not running face first into it like I did that skeleton a little bit earlier. Almost time to go back and make some more. I'm really tempted to let this gravel fall, but I don't want to cause another cave-in that's going to endanger me. So back down here, I'll grab up a bunch of copper, and then we'll be back uh, to end the episode after that. All right, I'm back. So what I've completed, um, mining up as much of the... Um, tetrahedrite as I dared. So I'm now over here at the sphalerite vein and a creeper came out of nowhere up there I think maybe and uh, yeah almost blew me up. Another creeper pretty much killed me when I was over in the um, uh, copper vein so yeah dangerous stuff down here but you know, kind of fun nonetheless. You're always like watching yourself. So that should have placed three, but it didn't. Not sure why, but let's go one, two, three, four, five over. Uh oh. Taking my chance. Alright, got away with it. Why won't you join across? That's strange. Um, one, two, three, four, five. All right, so that built three up. 
And that built the cross beam. One, two, three, four, five. Weird. All right. Uh, so that's how I get started on here. So now I know I'm safe to go at least four that way. Uh, but because it's wide open, we can see everything. We might as well just go over one, two, three, four. Here, we'll put down a cobble, put that guy down, brace that. And now we know we've got a good little bit that we can start mining out in. Not that we need a lot, a lot of this stuff, but um, it's good to grab as much of it as we can right now because then we don't have to come back for it later because I don't want to have to come back down to this uh, mine uh, in the future. So this we got a regular vein so it gives me 25 units per piece. So that's a lot better than the poor just, just means that we have to mine out less of it to get where we need to be for uh, our mixing needs. Now, mining that one is a little bit dangerous because that's too above my brace. So I just kind of don't need to take that risk. And with the amount of cave-in that I incurred down at the uh, the at the, um, at the copper area, we'll just take this area here real easy and just do it uh, with as little risk as possible. There, I got a half a stack of it already. The stuff in the floor should be fine. I don't think there's another cave below us, so I'm just going to grab this and we will call that a day on the sphalerite and then I just got to go find the bismuth and we'll be able to make uh, extra bronze when we need to, bismuth bronze. 22, should be able to round out a stack. A stack is 32 so can't hurt to have a full stack of it kicking around for our blending needs. And yes, these ones are all safe. And yeah, let's just take a look. So it kind of curls around there. This one should be safe. I love these big caves. That's something that Minecraft, vanilla Minecraft, really needs is that these big never-ending caves. So yes, it looked pretty solid underneath there over that way, so I think this is safe to grab this stuff here. Although just breaking this block can cause these blocks up here to um, collapse if I'm reading the wiki right because it searches, it scans in an area of like eight blocks or something like that and gives it a X percent chance to do a cave-in. So that is it for this episode. Throw the thumbs up if you liked my derping around. And we will see you in the next one where we'll be getting on to a couple of the other mechanics that uh, look are pretty interesting. So... I appreciate you all. Have a good one, and we will see you in the next one.